Doug from Passions and Pastimes. And we're going to take a peek at today into my brooch collection. And this time we will look at my silver tone uh, brooches. And I thought I would start first off with my collection of Canadian um, seagull pewter brooches. Um, seagull has made tons and tons of gorgeous designs. This was the very first seagull brooch I received. And they're all signed... Um, in a very similar way um, that's got copyright 1988 seagull pewter Canada and it looks like it's handwritten in there I'm not sure exactly how they do it um, so this is a beautiful sort of uh, art deco design art nouveau whatever um, girl with flowers in her hair and then I found this lovely rabbit one. Beautiful heart with the rabbits. Perfect for uh, Easter time again. This one's from 1987. This one is uh, beautiful birds. These show up in uh, jewelry jars in the U.S. I've uh, some of the I've seen some that my friends have found. Um, and here, this one is the birds is from 1988. As far as I know, these are still being made. I guess I should check on that soon. Shouldn't I? Um, I love this, uh, little piece dove. And this has got a, uh, a JP number 2005 seagull fine pewter Canada. And then just a, a maple leaf, a stylized maple leaf. And this one is 2003. Oh, and it's also got a, a code number. Seagull Fine Pewter Canada. So some older and some newer pieces. So that's my, um, my Seagull Pewter collection. I have, a, I have lots of very shiny rhinestone. Pins. And I've got even more than this, but uh, these are the ones where I haven't done any restoration work of any kind. So this um, is a pin I know came from an estate and I pur purchased it in a bunch of pins through um, Marcia at our vintage store. And I just love the design of this, the little, the spray with the circle and the, the rhinestones are so beautifully shiny. Um, this, I think, came in a jewelry jar. It's got these gorgeous Aurora Borealis rhinestones, except around the center uh, flower part there, they're clear, so it give, uh, gives you that contrast. And again, around the outside, good height to this. And uh, um, again, a vintage pin, but, you know, Aurora Borealis was a rent, uh, uh, invented with Swarovski and oh, who else? I can't remember. Around 1955, so post-1955. Looks like I've lost a rhinestone there. Okay, that would explain. Well, I found a, a, a spare rhinestone when I was going through my my bags, and I couldn't see where it came from. Now I know where it came from. I'll have to find that bag. I love this kind of sort of star-shaped orbital shape of uh, pins again the V back oh I suppose this says coral on it and I never noticed yes it does this should be in my coral collection okay well I'll put it up there again beautiful rhinestone pin and this is a lovely sort of bow pin but it's Unusual in the way it's made. It's not, you know, your typical, typical bow. And uh, and look at the how those rhinestones sparkle. Just gorgeous. Most of these pins aren't marked in any way, so I have no idea who made them. Yeah, but I just love the design of that since it's unusual. This is a pin. Uh, it's it's actually not really a pin. It's uh, I think it's meant to be for a, a belt, or a, there's like a little clip there and a. a Thing here but on the clip up here it says Czechoslovakia 
Selene Copper, beautiful rhinestones once again. Look at this sparkler. I love the baguettes, the rectangles with the rounds and the size of this one in the center. Just amazing. Look at the, the dome on that. So pretty. Once again, no markings. Um, here are a few of my more, much more vintage pieces. They're done in pot metal, so this not quite shiny um, silver tone metal. Whoops. And then, so these would be probably closer to the more in the 40s or earlier. There's that one. And then there's this one. A little more austere design. I don't know if they could go bound as early as the 20s. I'm not sure. I haven't done a lot of research. I just like them. <laughs> it's a terrible thing to say. Um, this is much older as well. This is a jabot pin. It actually screws apart and then you put it through your um, tie, your lace collar or tie. Um, and beautiful condition. I have to takes quite a bit to unscrew it so uh, yeah just unscrew it from this side there we go slides through and it's not it's not a hat pin it's meant to go through the holes in the lace it doesn't have a, a sharp pin that you could actually stick it in a hat I suppose if your lace if there was an open weave in your hat you could do it this came from a lot of uh, vintage jewelry I purchased locally. Um, this also came with the same lot, this lovely sort of dancer ballerina pin with the, the shell discs on the uh, skirt. Um, this came from a different lot uh, from the west coast of Canada. But I loved the uh, japanned metal in the back and then the use of the faux pearls and the baguettes and the little extra little rhinestones here and there. Very pretty. I like, un I like the unusual things. Um, and I like the things that I find in jewelry jars. So here's another one of the uh, old, much more older ones. This has uh, got marcasites in it rather than... Uh, rhinestones so you can sort of see there we do a little close-up on it so the and lots of texture to that um, this is something that I picked up uh, it's the Scottish thistle with the the heather branches in the back this is made by exquisite and I don't know if you can read that there or not. Maybe if I turn it this way, we can see it a little more clearly. There we go. That's the best I can do. So, and these are, these were meant as uh, a tourist item. That you would purchase in Scotland. Some obviously it made it way its way here to Canada. No markings on this great big uh, huge sparkler but uh, open backed rhinestones so you know made to allow the light to pass through them and give them their most or their best sparkle. I'm not sure if that's just that's not a marking there that I can read at all. So, um, but very, very nicely made. And I love these uh, pear shaped uh, points. Anything that kind of looks like a, a snowflake is good for me. Now this, again, I don't have any idea who made it. See, it's sort of dull on the back here. Um, I have had this for years and years. I've probably had this for 40 years. Um, I picked it up because I liked it. I used it um, in various costumes when I dressed up as Queen Victoria. I used this um, 
to pin on one of the garters. Um, I'm trying to remember. I, I can't remember why I exactly bought it, but I just loved it. And I'm so glad I have it still. Then I, there was some, a lot of jewelry. I'm trying to remember what else was in it, but this lovely silver tone kind of, uh, I'm not sure if it's tarnished. I haven't tried cleaning it yet. Um, flower, lily flower. Um, the Y-shaped uh, connector, very nicely made. I love the texture in the petals and the fact that it's just so many petals and so many stamens. It's just gorgeous. And then this one is similar in the coloring, and it reminds me of uh, arrowroot that grows um, on the side of the river, and uh, or some some people call it pickerel root. Um, it doesn't have this little ball in the center of the leaves, but the le the pointy leaves remind me of that. And I love this sort of wrapped little ribbon around it holding those leaves together um what else have i got to show you this is a more sort of standard design of a silver brooch again no marking but very nicely made i love the textures on it uh the, the lines that make it sparkle and yet this smooth ribbon that ties it all together this is a, a Jerry's pin. So I, I had one, I have one gold and there's one uh, silver tone. Again, classic leaf design. Could be, you know, could have come from any of the manufacturers. Very wearable, long lasting design. I have this silver pin. Again, a leaf and then some, I don't know, some flower stamens. And uh, it's a little bent. I ne have never tried to clean it, but it is marked 925 right there. You can, yeah, there you can see. Um, a pin I love is this swordfish pin. This came from a friend of the family. I inherited it from her. Um, I love the marcasites in it. And uh, I love the enameling. Just gorgeous enameling. Look at how... Um, I think it's called gush, guillage, where the texture of the scales shows through. So they've textured the metal underneath so that it shows through um, the enameling. And uh, again, this is also a sterling piece. You can sort of see it's a sterling underneath the. No, it's this way. But yeah. No, it's this way. Sorry. There's also a mark I have to investigate. Can I get it to show us the sterling? There's the word stir, and then there's a mark down here, but I haven't, uh, it could, this could be um, from Britain, it could be from other European countries. This is a ceramic pin, and I have it still on its card. Um, it's like a leaping whale. It's called Brooches by Frank, and it's actually um, made here in my town. So, uh, love to have that. I got that in a jewelry jar. But I love the, uh, I love the, uh, texture in the, uh, glaze on that ceramic. Okay, uh, this I came from a jewelry jar, another maple leaf in the silver tone with the, the cutting for the veins. It's not marked. I, don't think it's silver just based on the the way of the the back is done if it is it might be plated but it's pretty rough but still very nice pin i'm so i was surprised it wasn't marked bon boyd because it looks like one of their pins here's uh, a forstner pin again this one is silver uh, a lovely um, diamond cut design in it and it's actually um Engraved on the back, Helen, October 5th, 59, from Doreen and Rick. And it's, when I found it, I thought, well, that's strange. My mother's name is Helen. And I had um, godparents named Doreen and Rick. And I thought at first this was some sort of 
thing from the past that jumped out at me. But no, it's Doreen and Rick. Um, but uh, very interesting. I, you know, what kind of occasion if it was somebody's graduation, a thank you for a wedding, you know, who knows? But lovely silver again. I have an oval, uh, not rather than a circle pin, an oval rhinestone pin. Nice vintage pin. Nice rhinestones. This needs polishing, but this is uh, malachite in a silver setting. And it's both a brooch and a pendant. And I have polished it. I just, it's sitting in, been sitting in the drawer and uh, needs another good polish again. But I know I did test it. It is silver. What else have I got? Oh, this is, I've been trying to find information about this pin or about this company. This is a company called Foxy. F star XY It's Fox. I know it's Foxy. Um, but I have not found much information about them. Every once in a while, I see somebody else get a piece of their jewelry. This one I got in a jewelry jar. I liked it. So I kept it. A nice enameling. But I have been able to find enough information to really tell me, you know, North American, you know, Canadian, U.S., who knows? This uh, is another jewelry jar find. And this is probably not that old. Um, like 90s to, well, like, you know, in the last 30 years. But I love the colors and I love the design and the fact that it came out of a jewelry jar with all the rhinestones in place, especially with the uh, the marquee rhinestones. They're hard to replace, especially, the, you know, to get the colors to match. And I think we're just about done. This is um, one of my last pieces. This could be a pendant. I, I put a, a little... A little ring there or it's also a pin and this is um, shell little pieces of shell cut into star uh, flower shapes but I'm not sure what if it what it's embedded into if it's embedded into glass I mean it sounds like glass or if I mean it feels cold like glass or uh, I don't I'm pretty sure it's not shell that it's embedded into but I just loved how pretty this was. The fact that the different colors of shell um, make all these different colors in the brooch. A um, few final pieces. This is uh, another shell brooch. It's uh, alpaca metal from Mexico. Um, some people... Uh, have been call alpaca alpaca silver uh, which is really a misnomer it's there's no silver in it at all but it does shine up quite nicely it's an alloy of metals it's supposed to be hypoallergenic but I don't think it is because it's got nickel in it um, but it shines up very nicely and looks like silver so this is a very pretty uh, pin inlaid with abalone shell um, this is a silver and amber pin that my mother-in-law gave me um, after I admired it. She purchased it on a vacation. Um, lovely butterfly with the uh, dark amber. And I love amber. I love butterflies. So uh, she's passed now, but uh, it's a lovely memento to have from her. I have a, this Mexican canateel pin, canateel style pin. Um, and it's, I assume it's some sombrero and it's a lovely brooch. Um, this was gifted to me by a friend who had a bunch of family jewelry that they didn't know what to do with. And this was one of the items in there. So unusual. I've never seen anything in a sort of that sombrero shape. I have a canateel brooch again in silver as a flower. And that's a much more typical thing to see. This needs to be polished up again soon starting to to oxidize to tarnish lovely little flower and then this is a sterling brooch this is a bond boyd uh brooch again um there's the bond boyd mark there and again this is uh representative of our provincial flower the trillium 
and this is a much better representation than the gold one that I have that's sort of along the same lines of the design because the uh, this is a better representation of the leaves and of the flower. So I hope you like this quick tour through my silver tone jewelry and uh, there's much more to come. There's uh, sort of all the odds and ends of of all the little other brooches, the gold tone that I that I uh, have collected or been gifted with, plus everything that I've uh, restored, where I've had to replace rhinestones or solder things back together, who knows what. So yeah, there's a couple more videos uh, about my collection in the future. Thanks for joining me. I hope you had a great day. Bye now from Pat Hood at Passions and Pastimes.